Here, I'll show you how to use the VLOOKUP function across multiple workbooks in Excel. This is the lookup value. Here's the VLOOKUP function. And here is the workbook where we get all the data. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. Now, the first thing that you want to do is to make sure that the table in your source data worksheet, your workbook, is set up correctly. So here we've got our lookup values in the leftmost column, and that's how you need to have it for the VLOOKUP function. So we will use these values to search through the table. The next thing is to make sure that you've got both workbooks open at the exact same time. This is going to make entering the VLOOKUP formula so much easier. So let's go back to the first workbook and start equals VLOOKUP. First thing is the lookup value. I've got that here in cell A2, so click that and then hit comma. The next thing is the table array. The table array is where our data is located. For that, we need to go to the other workbook. So after you've typed your comma, and before you do anything else, navigate to the other workbook. You know you did this correctly if you can see the VLOOKUP function in the formula bar up here. So for this argument, select the data table, and you'll see the function start to fill in up here. Don't worry, it looks a little bit funny up here for the range reference, and I'll explain that towards the end of the tutorial. Now that we've selected the table array, type a comma to go to the next argument, and you'll see the argument list for the VLOOKUP function display underneath the formula bar. Do not go anywhere else. Do not go to the original workbook or another worksheet or anything like that. We finish entering the function here on our source data workbook. So for the column index number, I'm going to type three because I want to get a value from the quantity column, which is the third column. Then comma for the last argument. I'm gonna type false so that VLOOKUP will return an exact match. And you can either type in the closing parentheses and hit enter or just hit enter. Once you do this, it sends you back to the original workbook where we have the VLOOKUP function. We can test it out now and see that it works. Using a VLOOKUP across multiple workbooks is almost exactly the same as doing it across multiple worksheets within the same workbook. The main thing is just make sure you've got both workbooks open at the same time, and that's pretty much it. Now notice that if you didn't have a value in here for part number, you would see an error there. Don't freak out about that. That's just a common thing with VLOOKUP. If you want to get over that, you can just surround the VLOOKUP with the if error function and put an empty space for the last argument and it would look like that. I'm not going to focus too much on the if error function here though, so let's move on. The VLOOKUP function looks a little bit different when we open it up because here not only do we have the range reference for the table array, we have the sheet reference and the name of the workbook. So the workbook that contains the table, the worksheet within that workbook that contains the table, and then the range reference on that worksheet. This is what's going to look different in a VLOOKUP across multiple workbooks versus one where everything is on the same worksheet. Now let's save and close this workbook and reopen it, and there will be a few things to check out. When we close both workbooks and then open up the one with the VLOOKUP, you're going to get a warning, or you might get a warning, which says that the workbooks are now linked and there could be something unsafe in doing that. So do you want to update the links or not? So the VLOOKUP has created a link between this workbook and the one with the source data. The link just simply allows you to get information from the other workbook and pull it into this one. Since we created both workbooks, we know everything is safe, so we can hit update. If you didn't want to update the data, you could hit don't update. But once you click update, the VLOOKUP and all the links in this workbook are going to be updated with the most recent data from the source data workbook. And that's the real beauty in using VLOOKUPs between multiple workbooks. You may also see a warning up here at the top of Excel that says that links have been disabled, and it gives you a button to click to enable them. If you don't enable them, the links aren't going to be updated. If you do enable it, you can have the links updated to get the most recent data. 
Now, if we double click this and look at the VLOOKUP now, it looks different than it did before. Here, in front of the name of the file, I've got the directory path, so the location of this file on the computer. This is because the other workbook, the source data workbook, is currently closed. Don't mess with this. Don't change it if you don't know what you're doing. It just causes a lot of problems. Once you open the source data workbook, this directory path will go away and you'll just see the name of the workbook like it was before. So don't mess with the directory path or the name of the workbook. 99% of the time, everything is going to be okay with that. And that's how you use a VLOOKUP across multiple workbooks in Excel. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.